So we are working on an antibody treatment. It is going remarkably well. Our team has achieved some remarkable success in just nine weeks. Um, we are actually making a medicine that will treat people who are sick with coronavirus and can also offer protection to high-risk groups like healthcare workers, immunocompromised individuals, and elderly people. We've essentially been able to engineer antibodies that will block viral infection in a very short amount of time. So presumably when this is ready, if it's ready and hopefully very soon, if somebody is infected with COVID-19 and they, they go to hospital, if they get injected with this antibody, they get better quickly? Yeah, that's right. This treatment will start working within a matter of minutes once it's inside of a person. And that can make all the difference when it comes to getting people out of hospitals, out of the overcrowded ICUs, and also back to work so that we can start to rebuild our, our economy. Right, when I spoke with Jake, he was saying optimistically, he was looking at perhaps September being the earliest time that this will be ready to hit the shelves or hit the market. Is that still the, the timeline that you're working with? Yeah, that's still the case. So this type of drug development, it takes a long time. We are doing everything we can to trim down the timeline. We've created these antibodies in about two months, and this would normally take many months or years, if, at, if possible, even at all. But we were able to squish that timeline down into just about two months, but we still have a lot of work ahead of us. We need to essentially do multiple tracks that would be done um, one after the other, but we're going to do them in parallel to push this forward. So we're gonna partner with the US military and the Gates Foundation so that they can test our drug um, to make sure that it can protect hamsters from getting coronavirus. And in parallel, we are going to run um, studies with our partners at Charles River Laboratories, and they're going to confirm that the drug is both safe and non-toxic. Um, that will take at least a month or two. And then in parallel with all of those, we are going to scale up the manufacturing of our drug mm -hmm. so that it can be ready for phase one clinical trials at the end of the summer. I wonder those people who are asymptomatic and those people who have recovered, are they going to play a role in this process? Yes, so people that are asymptomatic are interesting because they probably already have antibodies um, that, assuming that they recovered from the disease, they have antibodies that will protect them. Our treatment is kind of like that, only we don't need to get sick first and recover. We actually um, take out the disease and we just deliver the antibodies um, as a treatment. So this is going to be especially important for people that um, a vaccine won't work as well on, like elderly and immunocompromised. We can mm -hmm. take advantage of the fact that we can just generate these antibodies and then administer them to people who are most likely to get sick or already in the hospital. And Sarah, people talk about this virus being a, a sort of black swan moment that hit humanity all at once, caught us by surprise. What if you learned personally about this virus, especially as you've been involved in the process of trying to develop a treatment? Yeah, I've learned that early surveillance is key. Um, we actually, we started working on this at the end of January. We've been reading the reports coming out of Wuhan since the end of December. And by the end of January, we knew this was going to be big. Even though the whole world didn't know it yet, we were looking just at the daily newspapers coming out of China that we are seeing in the States, and we said, we need to do something about this. So we actually went back to literature and we found monoclonal antibodies that people who had been infected with SARS 18 years ago actually produced in their bodies. And these antibodies were protective against SARS. So we took these antibodies back in January and we adapted them in our laboratories so that they will fit very tightly mm. with this strain of coronavirus and block infection. And having that head start before the global crisis exploded enabled us to engineer these medicines very quickly so that now we're actually ready to start 
um, scaling up manufacturing and then testing them. So just to be clear, because SARS is a sort of cousin uh, and closely related to uh, COVID-19, you can repurpose those antibodies. Is that, is that what yeah, you mean? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so, so, that's so, right. so that looking forward, should we not be doing this now for every other possible scenario that we can find for, for, for other viruses that might hit us in the future, or even bacteria, if you like? Yes, we certainly can. The technologies exist now. For example, a technology called Tumblr at my company, where we can create billions of mutant variants of a mm. single antibody and evolve that starting antibody to latch onto a new or slightly modified target. So we can use this in the cases of coronavirus, but also other viruses as well. It's already been shown to work for broadly neutralizing antibodies for influenza and HIV. This is a very well-established practice. We also know that antibodies are particularly well-suited for going after viral pathogens. For example, e the Ebola crisis about five years ago, Ebola used to be a death sentence. Mm. About 50% of the people who showed symptoms ended up dying. But then once they created an antibody drug for Ebola, 94% of people who were administered the drug early upon showing symptoms were able to go home. So that's a game changer. And we wanted to make that drug for COVID-19. Mm. Sarah, you mentioned that you're working with the US military, you're working with the Gates Foundation. They're not short on cash. So I mean, at this stage is the problem less about money and more about just being able to have the time to do things properly to get things out there? The, the problem is twofold. It's money and time. Both are extremely limiting for us. From the time perspective, drug development, we just had to make a sober assessment that it just takes time. There are things we can trim down, but we cannot cut corners when it comes to human safety. So there are parts that we will not be able to trim out. Um, in addition to that, we are able to accelerate rapidly provided enough funding. And we do believe that governments around the world should pay for this um, as their responsibility to humanity. But we do need a lot of money. We need 50 to $60 million. And that seems like a lot, but considering that the global economy is venting $11 billion a day, that's just a drop in the bucket. So we are looking for that money immediately to proceed. And as the numbers swell around the world, people get more desperate. Their fears become existential, almost apocalyptic. They start to gamble. Hydroxychloroquine, the malaria drug, and other things. People are taking um, supposed treatments by word of mouth. How do you feel about that? So hydroxychloroquine, remdesivir, those other repurposed small molecule drugs for, from other viruses, they may show some efficacy, but they aren't a cure. They aren't working. They aren't keeping people out of hospitals. They're not helping people go home fast enough and not helping enough of those people go home. If they were truly effective, we wouldn't be where we are now. An antibody treatment could turn that around. We had to try those repurposed drugs because they were our quickest route to success. And it is promising that they show a little bit of efficacy, but to really make a difference in this pandemic, we can't wait for vaccines. Vaccines are a year to a year and a half away at least, but an antibody treatment will get us there faster. It's mm. going to solve the problem. It's going to get people out of hospitals. It's going to get people back to work, and it's going to help us not only rebuild our economy, but be able to see our loved ones again, to be able to hug our grandmothers and our grandfathers. Sarah Ives, all the best with your work. Really good to talk to Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Bye-bye.